محلني للمنطقه ان احنا نقرب من بعض اكتر وندور على حاجات اللي احنا فيها شبه بعض نبعد عن الشخصيات اللي قدامنا من بره I'll go ahead. My name is Yunus Zangiobadi. I am the co-founder and deputy director of the Institute for Peace and Diplomacy, which is a foreign policy think tank, uh, think tank operating both in Canada and in the U.S. We work to promote diplomacy, dialogue, and constructive engagement, both in North America but beyond across the world as well. And I'm Tom Wiesel. I'm the head of the educational department of NOAL, the Working and Learning Youth Movement, the largest a Jewish Arab youth organization in Israel. Um, and I'm the founder of Formina Network, which is a network that uh, encounters youth organizations from across the MENA, Middle East, North Africa region. I grew up in Iran till I was 17 before I left the country. And you all, you mainly get the same narratives that uh, are either portrayed to you and uh, you know, kind of communicated to you by the government or the same people or network that you have. But when I left Iran and I went to Canada, I was exposed to other you know, communities, other ways of thinking, and I just became more interested in having dialogue and understand how others think. And it's easy to you know, kind of be in the same bubble, approve each other of how we think and how we operate. But what is very important in these days is that you have you know, social media, different ways of thinking, that you engage with those that do not think like you. One of the conferences that we organized, I invited Ambassador Wolfgang Bull Bullhardt, uh, who is the Swiss Special Envoy for the MENA region. And he told me about the MEM Summit and how this is a great platform to engage with young people across the region. When I heard about MEM, and I heard that there is an organization, there's, there's a team that focuses on the same idea of having dialogue, but among the youth. That opportunity to talk, and not only talk, but also work together through workshops, activities, was a fascinating idea which uh, made me interested uh, to even come back. And I will be still continuing to co you know, contribute and help uh, even in different capacity if possible, because it's just an amazing initiative that is happening here in Lugano. I would say my story, my life story, I grew up uh, in uh, the Working and Learning Youth Movement. Uh, just a little bit more about that. It's a 90,000 uh, participants organization. Um, a majority of uh, Jewish people in Israel, but we have 20,000 uh, Arab youth. And growing up in this movement, I think uh, one of our challenges is to confront uh, this basic fear between the, the differences in, in Jews and Arab uh, Arabs. So what we do is we do a lot of encounters. And, and growing up uh, in, the, in the organization, I had the opportunity to confront this uh, fear from the other and actually realize that we're talking about human beings on the other side. Of course, there are differences and uh, uh, there are conflicts, but I think when you confront or you encounter with the other, it's an opportunity yeah. to actually maybe uh, to look and search for another path uh, and maybe even solve some things, right? I had this crazy idea two years ago that uh, because of the Abram Accords, uh, we, are, we, we are able as Israelis and other participants and organizations from the region to might do something in civil society work. And one day I met an interesting guy uh, originally uh, from uh, Italy uh, called Gabriel Segre. And he uh, talked with me about my ideas and he said that I need to go to the MEM uh, and to apply to the MEM. And it would be a good opportunity to meet amazing people and to uh, make my work better. Uh, I applied and I got here uh, last summer and I had this amazing life-changing experience uh, which actually really helped me forward on with uh, developing the Formina network. Coming here to the MEM is actually even a few more steps forward because meeting uh, people from other countries that my country does not have relationship uh, with is, is actually a way and the MEM is, is a path, and Lugano, Switzerland is a path to, to even imagine uh, further steps to the future, hopefully. And we're building something which is more a civil society work. We're not diplomats, we're not economy people, we're not uh, uh, doing uh, security issues. We are more encountering and, and actually kind of trying to raise 
and to be part of this new generation that hopefully will build uh, new solutions to the, the region challenges. Basically, what really matters, and this is something that we discuss uh, at MEM, the narrative. You know, it, it, the narrative and the discourse of how we think is basically defining the next a actions, the next steps. And what happens at MEM is that those narratives that we have in mind when we join or when we come to, uh, to MEM, differs from what we experience at MEM. And when you see those narratives being challenged and redefined, then you see you know, relations and uh, you know, corporations happen. Because I live in Canada, I have had the chance to work with Israelis, but I've never had a chance to spend, for example, 10 days with somebody from Israel, but also other countries to work together on, on some projects that we all care about and uh, basically experience how you can work with those that you do not even consider and envision working when you live, for example, in a country like Iran or uh, others in, uh, across the region. So I think that experience is what redefines the narrative. It's not something that you know you experience it for 10 days and then you expect, okay, after this 10 days something magical is gonna happen and we're gonna have peace in the Middle East. No, but the mindset is kind of planted within uh, your brain and then when people that you know attend men who are all very well accomplished and uh, great people and will be great leaders in the future, then they, ha they have that you know, mindset inside them that, hey, we can work with one another. And I think that's very important yep. uh, that we've uh, all gained uh, through our participation in MEM. 30 years ago, maybe, and for sure 50, 60 years ago, I, don't, I, I, I would assume that people from France and Germany would not imagine that their grandchildren will meet, will share, will go to study in one another countries, will, uh, I don't know, will make friendships. It, it looked like un, un, unconceivable. And nowadays, I mean, for, for many reasons, of course, as I said, security issues, uh, economical issues, but n uh, but not, not but to, to add to that, um, educational and counter reasons, like Erasmus programs and others, uh, this actually created a different European re region that we all, uh, I think admire in, in, the, in the MENA region, and, and this is, I think, this the MEM is, a, as, as an, is an attempt to approach the MEM, the, the, the MEM region, and saying, listen, if it happened in Europe, and I think Europe, we all know how uh, bloody and uh, full of war it, it used to be, and, and hopefully it, uh, it, it's a uh, thing of the past. Um, it, if Europe could change. Uh, other other country other, other regions can change as well. That's in the conceptual level. In a more personal level, I think we just interacted last year, and I think we just had a great time together. I mean, we were just talking, we were laughing, we were having, having nice lunches and dinners, and and I think in in a friendship level, I mean, we were talking throughout the year. I'm actually very proud. You know, I'm talking with friends and saying, oh, I have this uh, friend. He's uh, from uh, Iranian uh, Canadian. And everybody like what? I'm like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's possible. It's actually possible. Yeah. So you change yourself. But at the same time, you're affecting your environment as well, and I think it's, it's meaningful. I know that it's going to cause some issues if, for example, I want to go back to Iran. There may be some uh, you know, questions of why you, know, you, you go to these places, you work with Israelis and Americans, and you know, some countries that you know, govern, at the government level, they have uh, problems with one another. But uh, again, I think what I, when, I, when I think about uh, these potential issues, I try to look at them you know, from a broader perspective and also see that this is not going to be an issue in the long term. And as we see in the region, 10 years ago, for example, Iran and Saudi Arabia, they had issues. Now you see them meeting. The Abraham Accord is a great example. You, you see that now Arab and Israelis, they used to work, uh, you know, with one another within, you know, Israel's, uh, you know, clo closer proximity like Egypt and Jordan. But now you see that expanded with, you know, GCC countries, uh, South, uh, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain. Uh, and Morocco is also you know, uh, another part of the region. So you see that in the long term, people and countries have no, uh, no alternatives but to work with, another, uh, with one another. And uh, Europe is a great example. You, know, you saw the World War I, the World War II, but now Europeans are working with another. You have the European Union. I'm not suggesting we're going to have a European Union in the, middle, in the MENA region every, every time soon, but I think you know, the ideas and the, you know, these little agreements here and there 
and then they, they come together to converge, and then uh, in the long term, I think there's, go there's not going to be an issue, for example, to, ha to talk to that person from that country or this person from the, uh, you know, this country. So to add to that regarding uh, the family and how people react, I, um, first of all, I, I, want, I want to say coming here to Lugano, to the mem I, I think for mo majority, maybe all, I guess all the participants, this is a really safe space. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what Switzerland is all about, uh, this, uh, this country and, and, and the city and the MEM. Um, and, and I feel it, um, you know, from the moment you land and, and, and the environment is very all about that, all about uh, um, knowing the past, uh, knowing the present, but focusing on the future and creating a safe space for everybody to, to talk about it, to create, to imagine. and. Mm -hmm. As my uh, colleague said, uh, it's not it's not going to be solved now, but mm -hmm. might be in the future. Um, so so yeah, I, I think the majority of uh, people surrounding me are feeling safe, and I feel safe, and, and I think it's it's really good and actually kind of excited, you know. Uh, and they're like wondering, so do people ask you uh, what's going on in Israel? And I was like. It's interesting, like people, everybody thinks that he's the center of the world, you know, uh, mm -hmm. each country, each story, each narrative, you're, you're talking about narratives. And I think the mem is all about, wait a minute, there, of course, everybody has its own story, his own story, it's important to keep that. But in the same time, if we kind of take the broader look, we can see other stories, which brings your perspective, and maybe we can create a common story as mm -hmm. well, which is the challenge I think we're facing.